Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. I'm Blaze Stewart, architect at Winlock. Today we're going to be looking at Azure Security Center and giving you an overview of this product. So for today's video, I just want to do a walkthrough of Security Center because this is going to touch on a lot of things that we've talked about in other videos already related to security on Azure. And this is just a way to manage all of that stuff at scale. And then there's some um, additional services that we could talk about through this as well. So Security Center, as it is meant to be used, is a purpose-built tool that brings together a lot of different security uh, services and features on Azure under a single pane of glass so that you can kind of manage it all uh, using Security Center rather than having to go to every single one of those services individually. And we can kind of get an idea what these are in this, this view right here. So again, it's just going to show me the subscriptions that I'm going to be working with as well as the resources and then uh, any kind of recommendations that it's going to be making according to that. So this is going to bring in things like Azure Policy. It's going to bring in things like Workbooks, Azure Defender, and then Firewall and uh, Network Security Groups and these kinds of things uh, to kind of give me a holistic view of everything security related, security related in the Azure space that I might be managing, including Azure AD for that matter. So this is uh, showing me the, the subscriptions that I'm, I'm working with. I have five subscriptions attached to this particular tenant. Uh, that I have and so Security Center is just showing me that I have those. These are the resources which we'll look at that in a minute. These are the recommendations that I'm going to be looking at. We'll look at those in a minute and then the, the security alerts related to this and it's just giving me uh, some KPIs uh, related to those and then it showed me you know scores and just uh, an overview of how secure things are in my context. I'm doing a terrible job with security, but these are dev subscriptions. I really don't care about these in a lot of ways because I don't, you know, it's just dev. I don't really have a lot of important information of these. It's just stuff that I create on Azure for experimenting and playing around with. But if this was a uh, experience that I was going to be dealing with in a production environment, I would want to take this very seriously and really to look at in detail what's going on inside of these things because that could be very important as well. So let's take a look at some of these uh, various things here on the left that we can look at. I'm not going to go over getting started. That's just some wizards and things like that. Recommendations are the things that I can get from policy as well as Azure Advisor. And what this is going to give me is just a rundown of things that I could do to make my environment more secure. And Azure Security Benchmark is a policy uh, pack or initiative that comes through Azure Policy that I can enable on any subscription. It's not specific to compliance or governance of any kind. It's just a general frame uh, framework for uh, Azure security best practices that I can apply. And this would be true of any subscription, regardless of if it's under in, in a regulated industry or an unregulated industry. These are just uh, what Azure security considers to be best practice from a security perspective on your subscriptions. And so you can turn that on and the policy can audit your subscriptions and your resources and give you recommendations based on that. But it's also the Azure Advisor recommendations as well. Uh, and that's what I'm looking at here. And Azure Advisor is a free service that we've covered in the past. And it's just basically going to give you things for optimizing resources as well as security things that you can do that for. And so these are things that I could do for in, in, enable Azure Defender, uh, turn on audits, uh, turn on disk encryption, uh, enable multi-factor authentication, uh, a number of things. But given that these are dev subscriptions, I haven't gone through the process of enabling that. But I would want to see a much higher score than this for a production oriented subscription. The next thing I want to look at here is security alerts. And this comes from Azure Defender. And because this is a, these are dev subscriptions, like I'm not going to turn this on, but this is a paid service. It would probably exceed the cost of what I have available in Azure credits. But just to talk about what this is going to do, this is a monitoring service that is a premium service on top of the recommendations that Security Center pre free tier, which I'm looking at here, give you. And so what this will do is it'll look at your Azure environment, not just 
from the way it's configured, but also actively monitor it as well. So it's looking for uh, things that are happening in your Azure environments. It's not pattern based like what Sentinel does. This is actually going to be based on uh, actual behaviors that are more signature based, things that are known threats, while, uh, while uh, what Azure Sentinel is attempting to do is based on patterns and anomalies that aren't known threats, but it's just abnormal behavior. And so what this is going to recommend is generally speaking going to be actual security uh, potential uh, threats or actual security breaches in your environment, and you could set up alerts on it. So what Azure Defender is going to do is actively monitor not only Azure resources, but it can also give you endpoint, encrypt, uh, endpoint protection for things like VMs. So it's going to be like your virus protection, your malware protection, and things like that it's, if you install the agent on your virtual machines. And this will allow you to actively monitor those uh, connections that are coming out of those VMs. And it's going to report back anomalies to Security Center. And then Security Center can then um, use alerts. And that will then notify the appropriate people when something happens in the environment so they can react to it. The next thing right here is Defender. Uh, is Security Center's inventory. And this is just showing me the things that it is monitoring. And uh, subscriptions, it's looking at VMs, looking at uh, storage accounts, and so on. And it's just making recommendations, uh, and I can go into any one of these and look at what's going on with these. And total resources, I have two unhealthy resources. I have four unmonitored resources, which are VMs that I have not turned the monitoring on for, but I did turn on the monitoring for some of these. Although this one right here is not completely monitored. It's partially monitored, probably because I have a firewall rule or something that's blocking some of the telemetry coming out of that. And so it's not able to get everything at once. But these other ones are just fine. And these are just some you know, things that I was spinning up for whatever reason. Uh, for uh, And I turned on the monitoring for those. But other things you see here, I have uh, various kinds of things. Here, I have unmonitored agent pool for AKS, for instance. I, it's a, a Kubernetes cluster that's not monitored, so the agent's not turned on there. But the other things I have turned on here are uh, monitored. And these are just Azure resources that it can monitor without the need of an agent. So that's my inventory. My workbooks gives me the ability to apply things to uh, a, a given set of resources. And these are just automation scripts that I can use. And there's a lot of things uh, that come with workbooks. These can be proactive and then I can apply things through workbooks or these can be in response to things so I can have automation related to alerts that come out of my environment. So if there's something I want to do in response to an alert, I can use an Azure automation script in a workbook that will allow me to apply something or turn off a VM, uh, deallocate a resource, whatever it might be in response to a security threat if that should happen right here. And, uh, or I can apply you know, security settings in an automated way through a workbook as well. And so that's what this allows me to do. And there's resources that you can browse through right there. And cloud security, this is just going to give me an uh, overview of things related to cloud security, not getting into the specific resources um, in per se, but it does give me kind of a, another view into those kind of recommendations that I might have. And uh, this is just showing me that same score that I show up here under recommendation. And so I can get, I can go into those recommendations, but it can also show me a breakdown on my subscriptions, like a base, and I could definitely improve uh, all of my subscriptions if I wanted to, uh, based on uh, some of the recommendations I was making. And so this score is pretty low for all of mine, but if this is a production environment, of course, I would take this more uh, seriously across uh, those production environments. Now, regulatory compliance, this is where uh, things like Azure Monitor, um, and Azure Policy, and other types of things will allow me to uh, give a view into things as they relate to uh, various kinds of compliance that I need to imp uh, improve upon. And so if I was on my um, my appliance, uh, my uh, under a regulatory compliance that I needed to turn on, I could turn on some of these recommendations right here, uh, enable Azure Defender, and it's going to give me the compliance standards based on Azure SIS, which is a cloud, um, the, the cloud internet security uh, group, ISO 2701 or PCI DSS. 
and other ones that might be appropriate, like FedRAMP or uh, some of the, the uh, NIST standards that are available through the compliance standards. And a lot of that's going to be based on Azure policy as well. So Defender can actively monitor this, but the um, uh, Azure policy can be implemented using those same standards. And they work together in order to give you recommendations right down here. And then you can remediate some of that stuff right here in Security Center. Uh, and uh, you can uh, take action on that as well using this to get compliance for your environments. And then you can also produce a report right out of Security Center as well. And then this is looking at Azure Defender. I don't have that turned on, but we looked at that. Enabling Azure Defender again just gives me that the active monitoring of my environment. That'll give me the ability to do alerts and so on. Now, this is something we haven't mentioned yet, and this is firewall policies. Now, Azure firewall policies and network policies are the ability to manage the firewalls that are available on Azure and then security partners. So Azure has Azure Firewall, which we'll probably do a video on uh, in the future when we look at uh, that. But Azure Firewall is the ability to control traffic um, with um, a very granular approach using port level uh, and protocol level uh, filtering, as well as the ability to do some things like NAT forwarding and those kinds of standard things that you could do at a protocol level. Uh, it's more stateful than just a typical uh, a gateway though. It gives you the ability to do stateful packet inspections and some of those things that you can use for uh, security monitoring and threat mitigation as well for Azure Firewall Manager. So this gives you the ability to build out a very, very, very robust uh, firewall um, policies and it's going to allow you to manage uh, multiple firewalls within the context of Azure Firewall, but you can also manage these in a one-off context if you have the, the firewall turned on on a given network. And we'll look at Azure Firewall in a future video when we look at that. Now down here is where I can look at pricing and setting and other types of things related to um, the, the various tiers that I might have on. I'm not, I'm using the free tier of, of Security Center here. And because I don't have Defender turned on, it's just giving me the basic recommendations for it. And so everything at this point is free. I'm not paying for anything. But if I turned on Defender, it would give me a pricing plan for that and uh, so on. Now, security policy is for policy management. And this ties back into the regulatory compliance as well as Azure Defender. You can turn on policy for free and get a lot of those same kind of audits that you can get out of Azure Defender. The biggest difference being that Azure policy is... Uh, more for auditing, it's not going to be able to be as proactive as something like Azure uh, uh, Defender, which is going to be able to alert on that and do a lot more with it than what you would get out of just doing a standard audit uh, using the, the policy frameworks that we discussed already for compliance, as well as some of the things that come out of something like SIS, which is just best practices and things like that related to uh, Azure security that we've seen already when we looked at some of these. And also, Azure Security Solutions has um, a lot of different things that you can turn on, and uh, these are uh, connected up into Azure. So you can turn on Web Azure Application Gateway WAF, and you can turn on non-Azure servers, and then you can do a, a SIM, and this is where you can connect up SIM tools like Azure, like Sentinel uh, to uh, Security Center and get a view of these into here as well. So this will give you connected services as well. And workflow automation, this is again gonna be looking at workbooks. If you wanna get into workbooks to do workflow automations for uh, the kinds of things that can be triggered by Azure Security Center. Uh, if I wanna proactively shut down a machine in the event that there is something that gets compromised on that, that is one way that you can use uh, workflow automation based on whatever the trigger type might be. So you can add that here as well. And then this is just showing me the coverage again, uh, what I've got here. This is basically looking at RBAC rules and permissions related to that. So it's going to show me um, potential, uh, the, the, everything that is exposed here. And um, this is giving me resources and other kinds of things for uh, coverage related to um, what Security Center is monitoring as well as RBAC rules and other types of things that are uh, coming through here. And so that's going to give me a view of what that's going to look like. And the other thing that you can do with Security Center with Azure uh, Security Center is connect it up to other clouds. And so you can use um, AWS right here and you can also connect it up to GCP. So if you wanted to bring uh, these 
other clouds into security center and monitor them through this solution, you can definitely do that. So it's got the ability to integrate with several other types of solutions that are not a part of the Azure experience. So everything other than this right here is going to give you very detailed information, security related information into uh, things on Azure. Now, Security Center with Azure Defender go together, but it integrates uh, more holistically with Azure Policy Firewall and uh, Workbooks to give you that, and Azure, um, Azure Advisor to give you that more holistic view of everything that's going on inside of your environment. So going back up here to the top, if you wanna get that full integrated experience for security, Security Center is gonna be the tool to use for that. It, and if especially if you're going to be using Azure Defender, but it's not the only tool that you can use to get things like auditability and advice on security and things like that. And these are other tools that we've looked at in other videos. So I'll be posting uh, links to those videos in the description below. But this is an overview of Azure Security Center. We're doing a follow up video on Azure Firewall and then looking at more about that and how you can use that to manage uh, traffic using that. And that is being a network uh, security uh, appliance that you can apply at the uh, network level to shape things there in the future. If you like this content, please consider visiting us online at www.wintelect.com and there you can find about services that Wintelect offers including training and consulting services. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon to get notifications when new content becomes available and also comment down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at the one mule and also follow Wintelect on Twitter at Wintelect now or at Wintelect. We are constantly posting things about Azure related technologies and things related to software development. You can also reach us by email at consulting at Until next time, thank you.